on the palmar side of the hand, looking for the motor and the motor examination. As we mentioned, the normal cascade of the hand is such that the hand goes in this position. Now, we can break it up into its component parts by looking at the profundus examination, which controls flexion of the distal joint or the distal interphalangeal joint of the finger. Flex and hold it there. Great. Same thing with each of the digits. The superficialis tendon is responsible for flexing the PIP joints. And I'll demonstrate that as follows. Make a fist. Bend down. That's right. Okay. And then bend this down right there. Perfect. And we bend down there. And if I hold the fingers up into extension, this joint right here is, mo is moved by the superficialis tendon. Now it's very important as you realize that as he does this, because of a common belly, the distal interphalangeal joint is floppy. He can't control that because I'm holding it by holding extension of the other digits. This joint becomes floppy and he has no control over it. But if I give him his other fingers, which I'm about to do, he has a very strong grip and it comes down into the palm of the hand. Examination of the radial side and the ulnar side of the hand is a little bit unique in that there's this group of very prominent muscles and they are in this case the thenar muscles and they're responsible for bringing the, paw, the thumb out of the palm of the hand and holding it there. And these are the thenar muscles of the abductor pollicis brevis. Okay? And they're responsible for bringing the thumb over to and touching the fingertips as we face and they come all the way across to the ring into the small finger. So if you do that, well. And then finally, if we look at the hand from end on, we look at it and we can make it flat, but the normal hand, the working hand, has two arches. Make a fist for me. There's an arch that goes across, that's a straight line between the heads of the second and the third metacarpal, and a line between the heads of the ring and the small finger. So that's a normal arch or a normal position of the hand. And the importance of that in hand fractures is as we look at this hand, we'll note that if you take all of your fingers and keep them straight, but just have them converge down like this, we'll note that they all converge down to this area in line, and that's the scaphoid.